The creators of BTD6 have a blog where they fill in the lore of the Bloons universe, telling us the mysteries, backstories, and secrets that make the game even better. Now, I make videos covering the lore as it comes out, but it can be difficult to find all of the older lore videos. So, this is all the lore combined into one big video for you to enjoy. Up first is that Gwen's signature hot sauce is made of concentrated red balloon, which is pretty dark if you think about it. Monkeys have their own language called Monklish, and you can actually reading it using this translation table. The structure of Monklish is basically the same as English, and learning it will give you insights into future updates, like how they tease the names of each upgrade of the beast handler. Plus, you'll be able to read the jokes that Ninja Kiwi puts in at the end of each blog. It's funny to think about what a monkey feels when you place it too far from the track to attack, but apparently they just assume that there's some grand master plan from the monkey up above. That's us. Have you ever wondered how the druid of the jungle knows where the balloons are even when he can't see them? Well, he can sense them through the slight rustles in the leaves, ripples in the water, and the delicate shift in the breeze as the balloons move through the map. Covered Garden is a controversial map, but the monkeys are delighted that they can't be selected when underneath the glass panels as it gives them a break from being poked and prodded. Quincy celebrates Day of the Dead and remembers all of his ancestors, but on the outside it just seems like he's muttering to himself about sons of sons of sons. You'll be happy to hear that Geraldo wanders around local farmers markets looking for good deals to fill his jars with pickles so you know that they're locally sourced. Dr. Monkey is involved in creating paragons and their incredible power, but we're not sure how big of a role he plays. There has been a huge controversy about Pat's skinny legs, but Ninja Kiwi has assured us that he is very strong and never skips leg day. The Ray of Doom chair is so comfortable that there have been fears of him falling asleep on the job, but Void had the amazing answer of that's what Locke's targeting is for. It takes roughly three human years to make up one monkey year, and I wonder if the fast forward button speeding things up by 3x is related to this at all. Quincy has tried many weapons in his time, but the bow is the best fit for him, and he even trains crossbow monkeys how to use their bows. When you play co-op, you can end up with several of the same skinned hero. Now, we know that different skins are alternate dimension versions, but the same skinned ones are closer to clones, though nothing is set in stone. Now, it'd be tough to befriend four bunnies, but Geraldo did this through tons of patience and a lot of carrots. Though the Avatar of Wrath looks scary, he's only mean to balloons. In fact, he has tons of friends and even gets hyped up by the squad, which is where his Poplus buff comes from. Many people speculate about which Paragons are coming next, but the team at Ninja Kiwi told us that the order comes down to the team having a clear vision on what it would look like and what would be fun to make and play. Some heroes have odd behaviors. One is that Pat Fussy likes to eat the whole banana, peel and all, and another is that Oban loves pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. I like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. The special operations marine is very small, but you should not mention this when he's around as it's a sensitive subject. Only a few heroes have their first and last names listed, and this is because others don't want to have their full names out there. Smudge and Pancake are Azelian ETN's cats, though Ninja Kiwi let us know that we made a translation mistake as it was supposed to be Crepe or Crepe as it's French. Also, the two cats are friends. Gwen synergizes well with fire monkeys like the Infernal Ring, Bloonsin, and the Wizard Lord Phoenix, but the last is her favorite one to work with. Also, she has no issues with the Ice Monkey, but they do tend to keep their distance. In Battles 2, different skins modify the heroes a bit to give them different edges, though there are no plans at the moment to bring these changes to BTD6. Someone at Ninja Kiwi is a huge D&D fan, and it brought out this fact. If the heroes had D&D classes, Quincy would be a ranger, Oban a druid, Sai would be a monk, and Adora a cleric, and Ben would obviously be the dungeon master. Maps like Haunted and Flooded Valley can be confusing as balloon entrances double as eggs Exits. But Ninja Kiwi said that balloons get lost too, and it's important to pop them anyway, as they'll just invade somewhere else if we don't. Plus, it's psychologically important for monkeys to pop the balloons as it keeps up morale. There have been a few incidents where someone has attempted to steal and or try out Quincy's bow. Gwen did so to try to shoot fire arrows, though it didn't end well, and Quincy tried to teach Pat how to use it, though it was just a little too small for him. Gwen throws tantrums in her defeat animation in Battles 2 as she really hates to lose, but I guess that's a good trait to have when you're at war with the balloons. There's a rumor that Encrypted still has a secret that's yet to be discovered, but Ninja Kiwi has assured us that currently there's no coded secret, though the team really wants to put one in there sometime in the future. The engineer was the monkey that dragged the broken balloon shipper to the scrapyard, never to be used again. You can find a cute 
cracking on the main screen of hard mode odysseys and this little guy is named kelly the reason you can't gain money in deflation and why there are so many restrictions in chimps is because the monkeys are trying to find more efficient and cheaper ways to defend against the hordes of balloons the super monkey does not get jealous when the super monkey fan club activates instead it is honored because imitation is the sincerest form of flattery have you ever wondered what it's like for balloons and monkeys when the fast forward button is activated well it's a bit like when you are super focused on something and you look up and suddenly hours have passed ninja kiwi has thought about changing some rounds but never really nerfing or buffing balloons i wonder if they would raise the health of bads or make ddt's faster if new heroes or monkeys make the game too easy the glue rat was nerfed because lich and other bosses were absolutely terrified of it and made it completely unfair the ninja shurikens can seek out balloons because they are filled with balloon hatred though only ninjas have mastered this ability to infuse that sort of power with their chosen projectiles the balloon war has been going on for quite some time now but ninja kiwi said that the monkeys are winning overall churchill got that wild scar on his face from a rogue bouncing bullet he's your own the reason Pat Fusty can always be placed in water even if it is super deep is because quote he's a big fluffy floaty boy. Speaking of water all the monkeys can swim if they need to though it's much harder to fight balloons while swimming so they prefer not to be placed there. For a while there we were able to nickname heroes though this was taken away because hero names are important to the balloons universe. If you're like me you may have wondered how monkeys feel when they get buffed or nerfed. Well Ninja Kiwi stated that it feels similar to when you or I are having a great day and everything is going our way and no matter what we're doing we're doing it better than normal. And the same goes for the other direction when we are having a bad day and we can't quite do what we normally can. Well, that's pretty similar to how it feels being buffed or nerfed. All the monkeys get along, but there is one rivalry, and it's between the Prince of Darkness and Legend of the Night over whose title is cooler, Prince or Legend. The factory spikes disappear after a certain amount of time because of a secret mix of the Glue Gunner and Alchemist, which allows the spikes to dissipate. There is a huge difference between balloons and balloons, as one is a rubbery being of death, and the other is a harmless children's toy that monkeys even use to decorate their birthday parties. Striker Jones learns the weak spot of black balloons with experience, which is why he's able to pop them at later levels. Have you ever wondered why the balloons don't add the regrow attribute to mob class balloons? Well, apparently they haven't quite figured that out yet, but I think it would be cool if a future boss did add this to all the blimps on screen. Even though Pat Fusty and the Cave Monkey are very similar in size and attacks, they are not related to each other at all. Speaking of Pat, we learned that it does not hurt to be hugged by him, even though he can shatter DDTs. This is because he is very careful and is just another reason why he's the best hero. Contested Territories is a team bonding experience set up by the monkeys and is why they are such elaborate challenges and rankings. If you were in a pathless forest, the wild balloons would not seek out and try to attack you. Instead, it would be just like Pokemon, so be careful of the tall grass. Speaking of Pokemon, Azili's favorite is Mimikyu, which for a Gen 7 is a pretty good choice. It's weird that in a war against balloons, only a small fraction of the monkey fighting force is in the military category. Apparently, this specific regiment was made as it would aid a ton in the monkey's victory. There is never a stopping point or last round that the balloons come. They seem to just keep on fighting on no matter what. Even though Sai is a kid, they are afraid of nothing as fear is a state of mind and Sai has the ultimate power of mind. We have seen a monkey turn to the dark side in Professor Evil, but we have yet to see a balloon turn to the monkey side. Geraldo says clean up on aisle 7 when balloons leak, which is a reference to his previous work experience at a supermarket. I think this could make for a pretty funny skin for him in the future. All monkeys get a solid education before helping in the fight versus balloons, and only those who want to fight have to. Alchemists can throw their potions through walls because they're a bridge between science and magic, and they know that if the space between the molecules align correctly, any object can pass through another. The wizard is not upset at all with the druid stealing its lightning powers. In fact, it gave them the ability to learn their necromantic powers. If I were a monkey, I would be terrified of bosses, especially if Big Bloons was turned on. But for monkeys in the game, their training kicks in and they fight even harder when the bosses come out. A lot of research and magic went into making a device capable of slowing down time through temporal manipulation. This device is the time stop power and it has yet to be a staple of a monkey's kit. All monkeys can technically deal damage to balloons via slapping, but Pat's hands are so big that they make for a great weapon, and other monkeys not so much. An air support hero has been acknowledged by Ninja Kiwi and is something they'd like to see, but no design has really fit yet, so it's still a fingers crossed situation from us players. Speaking of new heroes, canonically they are either in faraway lands or just haven't been discovered yet, which is why we get a new one every so often. The monkeys have very sneaky spies amongst the balloons, which is how the Monkey Intelligence Bureau gets its information. The monkeys that got transported to Adventure Time are still there and fighting hard. It is unclear how and if they will return once the threat is gone. If I were an ice monkey, 
monkey and I was fighting alongside Gwen, I'd get very annoyed whenever she thawed out my frozen balloons. But apparently this does not bother them at all. They really only care if she accidentally heats up their iced teas. Speaking of Gwen, her favorite way to cook is with her flamethrower, though she does accidentally burn her food from time to time. The monkeys have their own versions of social media like Facebook and Twitter, so hopefully there's an H Bomba over there giving them tips and tricks. The dirt monkeys' worst nightmare are leads and camos, as both are tricky to take down, with one having armor and the other being invisible. All balloons other than bosses are nameless and are only referenced by their properties. Getting consumed by a paragon does not hurt physically, mentally, or spiritually. Instead, it's like getting a big warm hug. Adding more difficulties to BTD6 is something that NK has discussed, but not something they're actively planning. The Buccaneers grape shots shoot actual grapes, and the crews of these ships occasionally snack on them from time to time, though they tend to stay away from them when the grapes are upgraded to hot shot. Side note, if you want to support the channel, use creator code HBOMB for any in-game purchases. It means a lot. You might be confused why monkeys don't go on the track, especially since it was literally made for them. Well, Ninja Kiwi said it best with this. I, for one, wouldn't want to be trampled by balloons. I think the monkeys share the same mentality, plus being off the track allows you to get better vantage points. Ninja Kiwi likes to think of hero skins as alternate dimension versions of these heroes. For example, they said Voidora is likely from a black hole interior or a non-atmosphere planet, so she's much more connected to space and the darkness beyond as opposed to normal Adora being connected to the sun. Boss balloons have characteristics or traits about them. Lunarius is territorial, Lich doesn't like sunlight, and Vortex gets the zoomies just like your cat or dog. But even these bosses have to step outside their comfort zone from time to time as we've seen Lich on many sunny maps. Geraldo's bunnies have names and it's very important that you get them right. In order, they're Hopsy, Flopsy, Button, and my personal favorite, Dave. We love Dave. When Gwen visits the forest, Oban makes sure to supervise her. I imagine it's because she's caused a few forest fires in her time. It's clear to see that the Goliath Doomship has two cockpits, so we just assume that there are two pilots for this behemoth. Well, Ninja Kiwi says that there's a fair chance of it having many, many monkeys on board to run this thing. This could even be said about any of the big boats or even Brickle's ship. Heroes are like celebrities in the monkeyverse. They often get approached and asked for autographs, though some, like Pat Fusty, like giving them out more than others. This is a rare one, but Ninja Kiwi said that the trophy store items are canon. A lot of them are just costumes, but they exist in the monkeyverse with connections to heroes, towers, or balloons. If you're anything like me, you've always wondered why Top Path Alchemists can't buff middle path elks? Well, now we have an answer, and apparently it's because mixing such powerful concoctions could have serious side effects, especially when the middle path concoctions are somewhat unstable to begin with. The reason monkeys can shoot through each other is because their weapons have been tuned in such a way that they don't hurt other monkeys. You can thank Dr. Monkey for such a valuable breakthrough. The reason blimps stay floating even when they have cracks and tears all over them is out of pure spite. That, and a mysterious force that they are filled with that keeps them afloat. Because dark champions resemble a certain superhero that we won't name, one could assume that its parents might be dead. But, apparently, the Dark Champion avoids all origin tropes whenever possible and its parents are very much alive. The reason Bloons let you put cosmetics and costumes on them is because they are convinced that it'll help them sneak past the monkeys. What would happen if you hugged a balloon? Well, it's only been theorized by Dr. Monkey, but it could drag you through the nearest exit, which we have no idea what's on the other side. An alternate theory is that the buildup of static electricity could be terminal. Yikes. The balloons have their own language filled with high-pitched air noises and squeaking. Because we all love Pokemon, it's important to know what types our heroes would specialize in. Gwen would obviously be fire, Adora would be a psychic fairy mix, Izili would love dark types, Striker Jones would rock a bunch of dragons, and my man Pat Fusty would just pick the cutest ones out there. Dart monkeys kind of have a cannon for an arm, so how high could they throw a dart? Well, there is a legend that the highest a dart monkey has ever thrown a single dart was 1,337 meters or monkey hands. We're not really clear on the units they use. Either way, talk about an arm on that guy. I have big news, and it's that monkeys can breathe in space, though I think they just said this to calm people down about moon landing. Don't hate me for this one, it's straight from the blog. But there's a cleanup crew that clears maps of debris after every battle, and it's made up of towers that no longer have any practical uses, like the balloon chipper. Many monkeys have graduated with a college degree. One of which is Dr. Monkey, who still guest lectures at the Monkey Varsity frequently. Scientist Gwen designed the Infernal Ring. This is super cool to think about, and I wonder what other towers could have been invented by heroes. All great ships have a name, like Jack Sparrow's Black Pearl or Blackbeard's Queen Anne's Revenge. So I'm glad to inform you that the Pirate Lord's ship is called Simeon's Vengeance. Ninja Kiwi has encountered some hilarious glitches when testing BTD6, but some of the funniest they've seen are balloons spawning with sentries attached to their heads that then shoot at each other, and another is a Glaive Lord with banana 
of farms rotating around him instead of glaive there is a destroyed balloon chipper on scrapyard and upon further investigation ninja kiwi had this to say about bringing it to btd6 as a tower the balloon chipper still does plenty of hard work in btd5 battles and monkey city and there were many things that we loved about it outside of that we let scrapyard speaks for itself Moab stands for Massive Ornery Air Blimp. BFB stands for Brutal Floating Behemoth. ZUMG stands for Zeppelin of Massive Gargantuanness. DDT stands for Dark Derigable Titan. And BAD stands for the Big Airship of Doom. Geraldo is actually pronounced Heraldo, but Ninja Kiwi says that he's gotten used to it and even embraces both pronunciations. Per Ninja Kiwi, you can annoy heroes by repeatedly clicking on them. Turning off hero audio basically makes the hero simulate a game of playing who can be the quietest. Each hero has a preferred method of transportation. Some are obvious like Brickle and Churchill as you can just see the vehicle that they use, but Quincy likes walking and Stryker likes parachuting. Ninja Kiwi said that there is a possibility for a non-monkey hero to come to BTD6. They just have to be quote, packed to overflowing with character. If you have ever wondered why there weren't heroes in BTD5, well, it's because they were all training during those events so they could prepare for BTD6. The glue gunner has accidentally stuck itself to the ground before, and because of this, the glue gunner has actually made a solvent to unstick when absolutely necessary. The reason Quincy seems to magically be able to summon arrows with his level 10 ability is because he fires hundreds of arrows into the sky above each map before any balloon evasion and he can call them down when his ability is activated the reason you can get a free dart monkey or glue gunner at the start of every game is because they are super enthusiastic fighters and require nothing to start battling btd6 heroes play other games for example, Churchill loves World of Tanks, Azealia likes any good horror game, and Pat loves fighting games while also being a savant at button mashing. Bloon's lore establishes that there is a monkey inside of everything, including Balloon. Have you ever wondered what happens to the mess left behind after each game? Well, the Bloon solver comes in and cleans up after the monkeys have finished defending. Talk about working overtime. Apparently, monkeys are physically able to move after you place them. It's just very hard to convince them to move from their favorite balloon popping spot once they've picked one. The reason balloons can't send out a bat on round one is because it takes time to gear them up, just like we can't get tier five monkeys down right away in chimps. Snipers never miss and will always hit their target. The reason for this is because of how much training they've put into their craft. The monkeys think of us like a guiding force to help protect their lands and not an all controlling god. Geraldo stores all of his power in his mustache, something which I might try out. Out of all the heroes, Adora is the most serious and ETN is the least. There have been many memes about this, but Quincy is very flattered at the incredible prices that his action figure can sell for, and he is not at all insulted by the fact that they can pay for him several times over. Quincy and Gwendolyn have quite the relationship. We've seen Quincy with Valentine's Day chocolates for Gwen, and I've read that he's even proposed to her, but I haven't found any evidence of the latter. Geraldo's first item that he ever found was his backpack, which allowed him to carry the rest of his treasures. The reason snipers never run out of ammo is because the engineer and wizard monkeys crafted a never-ending box of ammo, and I assume that this can be extended to all of the monkeys. Now we can all agree that baking is very important, and luckily we know which heroes are the best and worst at baking, with the best being Geraldo and Azili being the worst. The glue gunner is called the acid gunner in Bloom's Pop because Ninja Kiwi felt like they needed to align the name more accurately to what it does. When monkeys are sacrificed to a true sun god or sun temple, they feel Feel a sense of being and oneness and not pain and suffering. Ninja Kiwi is planning on adding tons and tons of bosses, at least until they run out of cool ideas, which they assured us would never happen. This one is pretty reassuring in that monkeys are not born into roles, they can change whenever they want. So if you place down a dart monkey, you know it's because he wants to be a dart monkey. Churchill is the best hero at chess, which does make sense as he is a military strategist. Technically, Adora could sacrifice balloons, but apparently this is the wrong type of experience and could actually hurt Adora. The reason camel balloons can get past walls of fire but not spikes is because spikes are quote just in the way and hurt stuff while walls of fire is magical so they take on some aspects of its caster. This one is pretty reassuring in that monkeys can retire after a long career of popping balloons and an example of this would be the lightsaber thrower. And lastly, there are endless waves of balloons as they have an unlimited population. Even if we combine all of our pop counts, we are not even close to wiping them out. Rumor has it that someone's drank a bottom path alchemist potion before and it turned them into a Midas monkey. 
He's still running around somewhere, turning everything he touches to gold, and I wonder if that's what's causing the golden balloons. Some heroes have nice, healthy morning routines, like Adora wakes up with the sun, does Pilates, and then has a healthy breakfast, and Oban goes for a walk with his guardians. Though, not all heroes are like this, as Benjamin is likely still awake from the night before. Back in BTD 1, 2, and 3, Super Monkeys did not need special goggles to shoot laser and plasma beams from their eyes, but in BTD 4 and up, they do. The reason for this is because Super Monkeys have gotten much stronger with time, and they need these goggles to help them contain this power. Additionally, the Plasma Blast upgrade does not give it a third eye. That third lens is just for flair. Dr. Monkey has many assistants to help him with experiments, and Gwen was originally one of them, but she kept blowing everything up. Thousands of monkeys send in their applications to try to become a hero, but only the best of the best can make it through the tough challenges to become one. Sanctuary is a place open to anyone who wants to stay, but mostly just monks choose to live there. Additionally, the statue is not that of Psy, nor is it a prophecy, and as far as we can tell, monkeys don't make or believe in prophecies. Monkeys have banana flavored things like banana chewing gum and banana candy. However, they nailed the taste of it unlike us humans. Fun fact, the reason why our artificial banana doesn't taste right is because it's based on a different variety of banana that is very rare to come by these days. Sada can simultaneously sword charge down multiple tracks using melee magic. I wonder what else she can do with that. Striker Jones has been the hero the longest out of any in BTD6, and Sai is the newest, which makes sense considering they're so young. The monkeys on Dark Castle open up the gates when balloons come, as they'd hate to have to replace the doors constantly. I mean, it would be a waste of time and money. When asked about a monkey devil, Ninja Kiwi said this, There are ancient writings of a hidden being that absorbs the sun's light and spreads darkness, but there is no modern evidence that has been found. Banana milkshakes are incredibly popular in the Bloons universe, but other flavors do exist. In fact, Pat and Gwen are always coming up with new flavors like Tabasco Peppermint. Yeah. The Bloons could find a material stronger than lead to give them an advantage. I mean, Dreadbloon is onto something with those rocky boys, so let's just hope that he doesn't make any more improvements. Bloons do have feelings. For example, late game ZOMGs feel doomed when they see all the towers that are about to wipe them off the map. Geraldo doesn't permanently sell everything. In fact, he only gives out Hopsy, Flopsy, Button, and Dave out on loan. He would never give them up for keeps. Alchemists have tried to use spike poles to launch their potions farther, but it was just one of the many experiments that have gone wrong in the testing grounds behind Dr. Monkey's lab. The crash Chinook and Bloody Puddles was just a little accident with a trainee pilot. No one was hurt, and they are now doing an excellent job. The monkeys in BTD6 are so battle-hardened that they barely even notice when you are spamming the air horn and co-op. So just keep blasting away as you won't annoy them. Most druids are old school and prefer to be technology-free, though some do keep up with the times and even have cell phones. Out of all the heroes, Ben has easily spent the most money on Steam, and he's in a library full of games that he doesn't even play. And out of every game, his favorite to play is PC Builder. The mat is officially not a robot, it's just a monkey in an epic mech. A suit. The sun avatar can see through those glowing sunbeams like their clear water, which is how they're able to shoot and see at the same time. Acidic mixture dip is basically equivalent to salsa in our world, but we're not supposed to tell the balloons that. People on the subreddit love shipping heroes and drawing fan art, though one confirmed crush is that Striker Jones has some pretty strong feelings, though Ninja Kiwi won't tell us who or what he likes. Gwen's Firefox is called Mozilla, but most people just call her Sparky. Open Spirit Wolf is named Fluffy, and these two are good friends. The anti balloon is a technological masterpiece, and it took billions of monkey money and many years of research to develop it. The free dart monkey does not care when you just leave him unupgraded all game, as he's perfectly happy to just chill out and pop balloons. The engineer once tried to hit a sentry turret to power it up, but it was a sentry champion, so it blew up in his face. Never again. Other monkeys have been injured by balloons like Saber Quincy, but most of them retired afterwards. ETN is only able to send out those four drones temporarily because they ran out of batteries. Should have used Energizer could have been like the bunny. The Bloon Master Alchemist wears those shades because he thinks they look cool and they double his great eye protection. It is not because he's blind. The reason Professor Evil isn't in Battles 2 is because he's so fixated on creating those crafty challenges in Battles 1 that he hasn't noticed the new game. As much as the game or blog may make it seem that monkeys only eat bananas, they also enjoy eating pineapples, candy, and sandwiches. Quincy is able to perfectly math out his shots to bounce from balloon to balloon out of pure talent. You'd think this would help them hit pink balloons, but I guess not. Monkeys are allowed to take breaks from fighting balloons. It makes them much more effective in combat once they come back. The engineer is always tinkering away, building other devices when he's not in battle. Canonically, the Prince of Darkness and Lich have similar strength magic. It's just different, which is why Lich can resurrect DDTs and ZMGs, whereas the Prince is limited to BFBs. In fact, in a head-to-head -head fight, Ninja Kiwi thinks that the Prince of Darkness would come out on top over Lich. Speaking of Lich, he's our best guess for who's behind the zombie balloons 
in Adventure Time TD. When he doesn't feel like talking, Churchill will slowly slide into his tank and shut the lid behind him. The balloons are not always happy with each other. In fact, the Zeonji was pretty upset when the bad joined the gang. For a Ninja Kiwi, Adora's color suits her mood, meaning there may be more to her than just yellow or black. Etienne gave Sentai Churchill that sci-fi drone. Churchill loves his coffee black but sweet, which I didn't know was a thing and I might have to try out. When a monkey gets upgraded, they stick with it to the end, meaning when you replace a boomerang's arm with a bionic one, they stay that way forever. The impoppable icon is just a sun avatar captured in the eerie green green glow of battle. When asked why was it legal to pay $500 to sink a small town, Ninja Kiwi said, how do you think Monkey Lantis came into existence? But it turns out that that is just one theory on how Monkey Lantis came to be. The other is that it was once a great city on land, but in ancient times, the ocean swallowed it whole. Striker is abnormally good at rock, paper, scissors, and no one knows if it's just luck or a lot of skill. Plutonium, which is inside all balloons, is a highly dangerous substance only to be handled under high level lab conditions. Part of the alchemist philosophy is that you might find gold in unlikely places, which is why they think it's a good idea to buff Benjamin when there's a balloon jitsu ninja right there. When open spirit attack disappear, it's not them dying or anything like that. It's just them returning to them to attack again. The ninja's kiwi has a real grudge against the kiwi fruit. The shattered ship in off the coast crashed because the captain was texting and sailing. The reason you get money when you pop balloons is because you've done a great service for all of monkey kind and you get rewarded appropriately. The balloons get stronger as the rounds go on for two reasons. The first is evolution as they just get stronger with time. And the second is that there are balloon gyms popping up all over the place advertising the likes of lead abs in just 15 minutes a day, fortified protein powders, ceramic boot camp, and much, much more. The balloon shipper just faded away with time, and most monkeys and heroes forgot about it. Except for the engineer. That thing was always in his shop. And if a hero saw a balloon shipper in person, they'd react similar to how a human does when they see an old car. Some people really love it, and others are indifferent. The reason bads and bosses are resistant to the Balloon Master Alchemist shrinking potion is because they're too big to be fully covered by it. Speaking of bads, Lich is unable to resurrect them because there's even a limit to his power. You can place tack shooters next to portable lakes because they're made of tack resistant rubber. The reason balloons don't have this is because they don't have Dr. Monkey on their side, luckily. Quincy is the best best athlete of all the heroes, though Sada is the fastest runner. Striker Jones is the biggest fan of sports games, and he even took Wii Tennis very seriously. Ninja Kiwi has talked about making a night mode theme in the past, but they haven't found enough time to do that yet. Have you ever wondered what lives are? Well, they're just the point where the battle is lost for the monkey. The dart monkey can trace its ancestry right back to the original balloon popping flash game sensation. Monkeys that can't pop frozen balloons are not fans of the ice monkey and even give it the cold shoulder sometimes. Lunarius is so huge that he creates localized storm systems mostly for dramatic effect. Churchill's tank is electric. Monkeys love to put bananas on their pizza, though this is usually reserved for dessert pizzas. If present day monkeys met the classic ones from BTD2 or earlier, the classics would be in awe of their descendants and the present day ones would respect their ancestors. Churchill has a huge underground bunker full of tanks other than the three that we see in game. Oban is very sarcastic, to the point where it's hard to get a real answer out of him sometimes. Cats are the most common pet to have in Monkey City. And finally, because there's no room in the rubber or lead for nerves, the balloons don't feel a thing when they're popped. Small monkeys mode came to be because a monkey drank the Balloon Master Alchemist Shrink Potion. Have you ever wondered what's inside a spike factory? Well, it's a worker monkey, a ton of spikes, and a sweet sound system. Sniper monkeys and ninjas are constantly sharing tips and tricks on how to be stealthier against the balloons. In fact, there is even a game of hide and seek going on as we speak. Etienne's drones are named Un, Do, Twa and Baguette, and his UCAV is named Argus. The monkeys that get washed away on Flooded Valley are perfectly okay. They just get to go on a little water slide for a bit. Jericho was a cobra back in the day where he learned lots of secret techniques, one of which was how to change the balloon types of his opponents. No one knows if a Prince of Darkness could reanimate monkeys. There are just some lines that no monkey dares to cross. We've never seen Lich attempt such a thing either, though it's unclear if he's too afraid to try or if he just doesn't possess that power. Have you ever wondered how things like flower get inside balloons when you turn pop effects on? Well, the monkeys use special projectiles and weapons that allow these effects to show. Some monkeys opt to join the reserve battalion and can instantly drop in when needed. This is how Insta monkeys work. Monkey explorers have seen writings and heard stories of great balloons with terrifying powers like Lich, but many of them have not shown themselves yet. Though alchemy is a very old form of chemistry, alchemists are very up to date with modern technology. They just use different and more experimental methods than other scientist monkeys. Other monkeys are technically capable of building sentries, you just need 
need a special sentry license that only engineers have the training for. Buccaneers grapes are frozen and sharpened with cutlasses before being loaded onto the ships. The Monkeyverse has plenty of fast food restaurants, with the main ones being Banana Express, Monkeys Jr., Hungry Pats, and the classic Monk Donalds. Heroes generally get sad when excluded from Odysseys, as everyone enjoys a good boat trip, but Brickle gets furious when excluded from any naval mission. Quincy graduated at the top of his class from the College of Archery. DDTs are always training and ready to go, no matter what. The mark on Azili's forehead is a scar from when she was a child. Pat sleeps with as many blankets as he can, as he loves being all snuggled up. So far, the balloons have only escaped to the land of Ooh, but if they do manage to escape through another portal, the monkeys will be right behind them and team up with the heroes of the other universe. Fingers crossed for a Plants vs. Zombies collab. Alchemists are constantly trying to perfect new potions. Some that they're working on right now are the Potion of Invisibility, Pat Strength, Speed, and Instant Banana. Bloons eat hopes and dreams. Literally. Members of elite fighting forces get special insignias that they can wear and paint on their vehicles. Two examples of this are the Goliath Doomship and Special Poperations. The Glue Rat always seems to find glue left behind and loves rolling around in it. Speaking of the Glue Rat, his name is either Snitch or Skrulk. We haven't quite figured out which one yet. Biker Bones is a real flaming skeleton monkey. It's not a costume. Brickle thinks waterbeds are essential while on shore, but Ben disagrees as he's too worried a stray dart might pop the bed and ruin his tech. If Geraldo opened a market, he would name it Geraldo's Mystic Emporium and Mustache Grooming Center. Speaking of Geraldo, when his bunnies fuse, they take out all their anger on the balloons. Apparently, they're pretty angry. There is a ban on arm wrestling for the monkeys. There are just too many risks. Jerry's fire is not so hot that it causes monkeys to breathe fire. There is just a little hot sauce spirit who pops out and helps fight the balloons. DDTs always travel in threes because they read up on monkey history and came across some ancient texts that said the number three represents good fortune. Dart Industries is the main supplier helping all scientists, wizards, alchemists, engineers, and super monkeys design, test, and construct all equipment needed. Just like our world, companies in the monkeyverse ask heroes to sponsor or endorse them all the time. In fact, Ben does a lot of sponsored posts. Which reminds me, use creator code HFOM if you want to support the channel. Monkeys do have nicknames for each other. I mean, it would be awkward for someone to be named Refreeze or Lead to Gold. It took the Beast Handler over two decades to tame the beasts enough to take them into battle. Monkeys don't feel sad when the players don't upgrade them to their favorite path. They're just happy to help in whatever way they can. The Mad and Sentai Churchill are good friends and have a healthy competition for who can look cooler in their mecha suits. The base tag Tack Shooter is pink because that was the original Tack Shooter Engineer's favorite color. The Beast Handler's Beasts and Geraldo's Merge Bunnies have a friendly rivalry for who can be the better beast. Speaking of the Beast Handler, they feed their beasts four times a day on top of all the balloons they eat. Benjamin is the best joke teller of all the heroes, and Striker Jones is the worst if you don't like dad jokes. Sandbox mode is akin to a practice simulation where monkeys can try out different strategies and paths before heading out to fight the balloons. Patch has popped many balloons in test environments, but if she were ever attacked, she could defend herself with her wit and her trusty clipboard. Beast handlers had to search far and wide to find these types of amazing creatures. The heroes don't all live together. Ben has a cave with at least five monitors, Pat has a big pond, and Adora lives in a sun temple. Sada's blades are finely crafted and enchanted before battle, then they add activate once Sada has leveled up enough. Ben doesn't hack in infinite money because he's an ethical hacker and he likes to keep it somewhat fair. Geraldo's rejuvenation potions taste like a tropical sparkling juice. The beast handler can't pop purple balloons because his stick is imbued with magic. There is a bit of a shock when Subs, Bucks, and Brickle first met the Megalodon, but they trust their beast handler allies and were never worried. Sada's not too picky about her tofu, but she loves frying it and eating it with tons of sauce. Sauce. Don't, don't put that in. Outside of tofu, Sada loves eating harvest pea snaps and chocolate chia pudding. Monkeys love hanging out on their contested territory islands, especially when you add fun decorations to them. Agent Jericho wields a standard issue Popper 226. Have you ever wondered how entire villages are built in less than a second, yet buildings can take about a day to make in Bloons Monkey City? Well, the villages in battle are more like pop-up ones, where the ones in the city have to be sturdier and are built to last. Adora's favorite animal is the T-Rex. Because of this, she has a tremendous 
tremendous amount of respect for beast handlers and their dedication to training their beasts. Threadbloon enjoys eating bread and collecting pretty rocks. If he finds big strong rocks though, he turns them into shells for balloons. Dartling Gunners tried replacing their darts with some buccaneer hotshots before, but it didn't work out. The Powakai and Wizard Lord Phoenix are great friends, often going for long glides across the plains together. There are all sorts of professions for young monkeys to choose from outside of the ones we see. They can become lawyers, doctors, firefighters, and much, much more. The cave monkey, aka Greg, loves hanging out on warm beaches. When not fighting balloons, Ben works on mastering every programming language, but he loves to flex his programming muscle with C Sharp. Monkeys are not stuck in their role forever. Any monkey needing a change of pace can head back to training and pick a different role. Super monkeys are surprisingly humble day to day, though they love showing off when asked to. The monkeys are pretty committed to not destroying their world and habitats, and have even modified their nukes to not damage the ecosystem. Apparently, the trick to this breakthrough was adding bananas to the payload. A very popular kid's toy in the monkeyverse are banana blocks. You can make all sorts of contraptions out of them, but they don't hurt monkey feet if stepped on, even if they're shaped like spikes. Sounds like Legos with none of the downside. Ezeli loves shiny hunting and even has a shiny Gengar. It turns out that the balloons don't have a currency of any kind. They're just a bunch of airheads. That was, that was dumb. The different band colors for tier one and two dart monkeys don't give or increase their power. It's just a vibe as wearing comfortable bands help them pop balloons better. Daily challenges were once considered training for monkeys, so Dr. Monkey could analyze any gaps in their capabilities, but recent discoveries show that the balloons may be studying the monkeys in these challenges too, so it's a two-way test. Full auto snipers are able to whip back and forth without getting whiplash because they love to dance in their free time, giving them plenty of training and coordination to spin and twirl. We have never seen the monkeys go on the offensive, but we're not sure if that's worldview, supply line issues, or lack of tell about where to go after the balloons. The Magus Perfectus is so powerful that they just magicked their beard into existence, and Geraldo taught them his ways to always keep it in pristine condition. Churchill loves driving his tank so much that he just spins around even when not popping balloons. He says this helps him not get stuck, but that's probably just an excuse for him to do donuts. Kaiju Pat's armor is different than that of Cyber Quincy and the Anti-Balloon. His is more natural, and theirs is made of metal. Jericho is not seen in BTD6 because he's out on top secret missions. Though, when asked if Jericho will ever come to the game, even in just a cameo, Ninja Kiwi said he's pretty busy, but never say never. Geraldo's pet has a mustache that is also filled with power, just like his owner. The balloons have a strict hierarchical structure when not on the battlefield. Bosses are up top, and red balloons are down at the bottom. Monkeys that can see camo balloons can still tell the difference between camos and normals, so they don't think that rounds 24 and 33 are super easy. Heroes love giving back to the community outside of just popping balloons. Ben provides tech support, Adora likes to lead guided meditation, and Sai is a part of the local community marching band. In the Monkeyverse, Battles and Battles 2 are practice and strategy simulations to prepare monkeys for the battles ahead. No one has ever succeeded in hacking Benjamin, which is why he helps the MIB set up their system. Super monkeys can fly as seen in the Super Monkey Storm, but placed super monkeys avoid flying as to not get distracted so they can do the best job they can. Cyber Quincy does not run on batteries, nuclear, or solar power. He just has to make sure to get a good rest each day like the other heroes. Beast handlers don't get nervous when their sharks, dinos, or birds start biting mobs or BFBs because they have a special dentist on speed dial for any issues that might pop up. The boomerang monkey can throw and catch glaives without any protective gear because of how much practice they've put into their craft. In training, they used to get injured all the time, but they healed up just fine with bandages and soothing aloe banana cells. The monkey in the map editor icon is Archie, and he oversees all building and construction done by players. Scoop is a good friend of Patches, sometimes helping her with work while not out exploring the world documenting wildlife. Bookworm's dragons are called Snaps, Terry, Chomp, and Geever. Weaver. Weaver. The Ultra Juggernaut doesn't care about being the only tier 5 dart monkey without a cool outfit. They really like having that unrestricted mobility. You'd think that acidic mixture dip would corrode darts or other projectiles, but all mixtures have been thoroughly tested before taken to the battlefield to make sure no weapons would corrode. Adora's temple was planned out using Legos, and she was even tempted to build the temple out of Legos to give the balloons an extra hazard to look out for. Ninja Kiwi stated that no heroes are married yet, but they declined to answer if any of them are dating. Switching the throwing arm of a bionic boomerang seems tricky when one arm is bionic, 
but some super smart wizards figured out a way to instantly mirror the boomerang's bionics when needed. Since cave monkeys exist, one could assume that there'd be a primal version of balloons too. However, Patch dug through the files and could only find references to balloons in their current form. There are other animals in the monkey verse, but they don't all join the fight. Back in the BTD 5 days, the special agents were great examples of these. A lot of tech goes into the spike factory, but there's no AI. Instead, there's a highly trained monkey in there doing the work. The monkeys use Bluntonium as a completely renewable power source. Once drained, Bluntonium becomes 100% recyclable in the monkey's green energy program. Unused income at the end of games gets put towards some great programs for young monkeys, like extracurricular education and sports programs. Sai loves every hero, but does complain about Gwen's cooking being a bit spicy from time to time. Patch and Pat have started an outreach program to help train cave monkeys on modern life in the village. Currently, they're a bit too distracted to make progress, but hopefully we'll be able to upgrade them one day. Brickle is a fully certified lifeguard and has undergone extensive training. The monkey who slides down the water park slide is completely fine. They're a trained stunt monkey and can easily go over a pile of spikes with no injuries. Some wizards and druids are born with magic, while others learn it. However, not all monkeys born with wizardly or druidic essence pursue those jobs. Even with FaZe being an incredibly powerful balloon, Blunaria still holds the title of leader as FaZe can be a bit hard to pin down for important boss meetings. Speaking of FaZe, we are unsure if he's two separate balloons, a spatial mirror, an attached alternate universe version, a balloon moving so rapidly that it appears in two spots, or something else. Engineers can theoretically cluster an infinite number of sentries in one spot, though this would require sentries to have an infinite lifespan. Zai loves iced tea, especially when it's flavored. Monkeys do not get claustrophobic when grouped in a tight space. It's as close as they can get to a snuggly pat hug without him being there. ZMGs love floating, drawing skulls, and playing in death metal bands. Monkeys have described being radar jammed by FaZe as having a temporary blind spot. We know that FaZe comes from the Chaos Rift, but little is known about it. The MIB said that the rift seems to be one part of a gateway. It's unknown how many parts total or where they are though. Additionally, the chaos rift is somewhere between an alternate reality and the future. Whatever that means. Shino is Sada's favorite Animal Crossing character. Speaking of Sada, she's the best hero at mixed martial arts, but she prefers to use her swords. Churchill has two massive collections of manga. The first is a variety of his favorites that he shares with other heroes, and the second is a huge stack all about himself. He is nice though. He gives out signed copies to all his fans. Phoenixes are originally from the Plane of Fire, but they have adapted to the Blue Universe and are now able to be found where the wizards are. As for the Plane of Fire itself, it's a realm of heat, flames, lava, and magical brass cities, home to all sorts of fantastic fire-based creatures such as the mighty phoenix. Monkeys love to read, but the hungry caterpillar is a classic choice for young aspiring heroes. Ezeli, Ben, Gwen, and Churchill love the warm sun and are always looking forward to planning the next beach day. Quincy has quietly been practicing the Vuvuzela in his spare time. Ezeli's favorite thing to do when not popping balloons or playing with her cats is scrapbooking. Who would have thought? Boss balloons are sneaky. They're always lurking around somewhere, waiting for the best time to strike. There may even be undiscovered ones that we've never seen. Heroes are all different sizes and ages, but Quincy, Gwen, Stryker, and Obin were the first graduating class of heroes for BTD6. The Mob Glue's gun is double-barreled because the glue is so strong it needs to be kept separate until it's ready to stick something down. Pat's least favorite chore is making the bed. He'd much rather sleep in a giant blanket pile. So would I, Pat. So would I. Most worn hero capes are damaged ones from battle, although Geraldo might know where to get a pristine one. Have you ever wondered what happened to the monkeys when the ice melts under them on the map erosion? Well, they just make their way back to HQ for some hot showers and a nice meal. One of Lifeguard Brickle's fleet is always hanging around just outside the combat zone for any stragglers that need help. Gwen lost in a cook-off once due to unfortunate circumstances. The winner turned out to be Monkey Fieri, a quite well-known restauranter in the Blue Universe. He just had the secret fire to his entry that helped sway the judges. Glue gunners use colorful glue like yellow and pink to make it easier for their fellow monkeys to see the glued balloons. Monkeys get their birthday off if they request it, though most of the partying happens once the fighting is done for the day as the rest of the monkeys come over for a cake and celebration. Scoop was the editor and photographer of the yearbook for his final year in high school. If Ezeli became president, there'd be free cats for everyone. Dorime. 
can paragons separate? Well, scientists, wizards, and engineers have a process to separate the fused monkeys, but it's still in its early stages and takes quite a while, but they're working on a more efficient solution. New maps in BTD6 are just areas that haven't been explored, discovered, or sometimes areas that just haven't seen the balloon forces before. Quincy took inspiration from Glaive Ricochets when learning how to make his arrows balance from balloon to balloon. The training to become an ice monkey involves a lot of time in freezers, working on ice, cold, or snow related puns, and ideally a trip to visit polar bears in the North Pole. Sai discovered their powers through careful meditation and training, and accidentally moving their toys as a toddler. Beast handlers respect the honorable creature known as the duck, who can fly, swim, and walk. There are teams all over the world looking for lost monkeys like the cave monkey. Quite a few have been found, though some complain about being woken up and roll back over to nap. Here's some deep tax zone lore. Some crazy monkey adopted a hedgehog and thought how cool it would be to shoot all those spikes out super fast and thus the tag zone was conceived. The in-universe explanation of the map editor is that architects are always designing new areas for monkeys to play, learn, and grow. We use specialized building materials and programs to plan out features and attack routes for possible balloon invasions. If you want to become a hero, Patch has quarterly hero signups. Be warned though, you have to have a particular set of skills, skills acquired over a very long career, skills that make you a nightmare for the balloon. Unfortunately, Archie will not become a hero for us to play. He's just way too busy helping build maps. Canonically, reverse mode is the balloon's attempt at a sneak attack by hitting us in the rear. Monkeys absolutely love Sushi Ben's sushi, especially when he experiments with new flavors and seasonings. We have to plan half cash to get black borders because the monkeys need to train under all circumstances, including having reduced resources. The map editor parts are fabricated in a huge facility, but Archie supervises their construction out in the training grounds. He's very impressed with the ingenuity you all have. Gwendolyn tries to avoid any extra sugar like those found in energy drinks as she's so full of energy already. Monkeys found out about Paragons because their R&D department is always finding new strategies and inventions to try. With a little assistance from the wizards, they discovered this way to make an ultimate form. And finally, Al, the balloon chipper's engineer, and Archie Archie are not related, but they admire each other's work. Archie even went to Al's retirement party. But that was all the lore we've ever done on this channel. If you want to catch any future lore videos, make sure to subscribe.